What up guys, today I'm going to be ranking the disc covenants for Arena and I'm going to start off by ranking the covenant abilities themselves so that we can kind of get a feel for which covenant feels the strongest. Uh, then I'm going to break down the available conduits and we're going to give them a rank each so that we can get a feel for which conduit type is going to be the most valuable. Uh, and then finally I'm going to go through the soulbind trees and we're going to rank the individual talents in those trees and then we're going to give each tree a final rank uh, based off those talents and the number of conduits that it kind of lends itself to, the conduit slots that is. Uh, this is going to give us an overall rating for each covenant with both the abilities and the conduits and the soulbind tree in mind. Uh, and so my hope uh, with doing this is because of the static nature of covenants. Uh, I think it's going to be more valuable to have like a quite a broad spectrum of information um so then for people that want to do like multiple types of content and maybe play multiple specs you're going to have more information to try and choose the optimal covenant for you so what i've done is create this spreadsheet uh it's not quite finished yet obviously you can see we've still got Torgas to do for disc we've still got holy and shadow to finish off obviously i'm more familiar with disc but i have been uh Asking around in the community, big shout out to Zot for the shadow info, uh, Zen for some holy info, and to Modmo for some mythic plus info. It's all been really helpful. Thank you very much, guys. Um, so yeah, what we've got here is we've got a, a column for each content type, and we've got a rating for the relevant ability in that content type and we've got a few notes coming in here as well just kind of for more information so this spreadsheet will be available in the description of the video if you want to you know delve a little bit deeper into it we're gonna go over everything relatively lightly in the video itself to keep it nice and basic but yeah without further ado we've got arena here and i'm going to talk about the first two abilities so we've got kyrian obviously as the covenant and we've got the steward which is getting uh, a six out of ten here uh, the pots are nice, other than that, doesn't really have much effect in Arena. Uh, and it's on a 3 minute cooldown, so it's not an insane rating because of that, but it's definitely something that is valuable uh, in certain situations when people go on you. Then we've got Boon of the Ascended, also getting a 6 out of 10 in terms of the abilities. Uh, recently got nerfed, was a little bit higher rated, but it nerfed, got nerfed by about 30%. Before that, it was doing really, really good numbers. It was really, really good burst during CC, and you could almost take someone down by yourself. It was, it was really crazy uh, damage, and I think it was a lot closer between Kyrian and Venthyr before that nerf. Now, since the nerf, nerf, it's not hitting quite as hard. It's a three-minute cooldown, so you almost get one use of it per game with the pacing of everything at the moment. Uh, so yeah, it's down to a six out of ten for me here. We have the Soulbind also as a six out of ten. Once I've gone through all the abilities for the different covenants, we'll go through and take a look at the soulbinds and the conduits. So we've got Door for Venthyr. Uh, I've given that a 7 out of 10. I think it's slightly more useful than the Steward uh, pot. Just because it's useful whether people go on you or not. You can use it as mobility, Priest lacks mobility. Uh, so I think with some of the uh, soulbind talents that go with it, uh, it can be quite powerful. So giving that a 7. Mind Games has got a 9 right now. Mind Games is really insane right now. It hits really, really hard. Uh, plus, you get, obviously, the reverse component of it, and it gives you up to 4% mana back. So, just like everything you could possibly want out of an ability like that. Definitely has a lot of outplay potential. Uh, so, the kind of... What's the word? The, the instant kind of value, rather than just like a PvE value, is, is really high. You can just win a game off of Mind Games at the correct time. Which is really insane to me. I think that's that's a great ability to be coming uh, to disc and, and just kind of a tool in general to be added to the game. Uh, if they can balance it well, I think it's going to be really fun to use. And then obviously we've got an 8 for the Soulbind. We'll talk about that in a minute. And that actually brings us to an 8 out of 10 on Venthyr, which incidentally is the highest overall rating for a, a Covenant for disc. So Venthyr is actually, I think, right now the best your best option for Arena for disc. Uh, by a little, well, a fair margin. Uh, it was a lot closer, as I said, between Kyrian and Venthyr, but Kyrian recently been nerfed, so Venthyr is the standout one for me right now. Uh, the other two almost aren't even worth talking about. I'm going to gloss over them really quickly. Fleshcraft, 
has some outplay potential with certain uh, talents with it where he, it makes you immune to CC. Other than that, not that much of note to it. Uh, doesn't provide that big of a shield and it's a two minute cooldown. Unholy Nova just generally really lackluster, especially when there's fewer targets available. The damage is not that high a bit. The healing, again, is single target only. Uh, only one of the dots will provide a tome and healing. And then obviously people hitting into that target doesn't provide that much healing either. So pretty lackluster all around. The Soulbinds, some of them are kind of nice. Again, we'll take a look at them in a bit, but I'm giving that a 5 out of 10 overall. And Night Fae as well, also a 5 out of 10. Soul Shape, just generally a lackluster button to press. Uh, the, the Blink Forward is only 15 yards, it's not great. There's a couple of talents that work well with it, but it just doesn't really do that much uh, in the way of kind of that incidental value that we're looking at in terms of, you know, Kyrian and Venthyr. So a 5 out of 10 for that. Fae Guardian, same thing. It's very restrictive. Uh, you need to be using it on, you know, the correct target all the time because you get one of each Guardian. So then you can only damage that guy or, you know, if you're throwing around shields for Atonement, then you're going to not necessarily have the damage reduction on the guy you want. You not, might not get the cooldown reduction on the thing that you want and that might, you know, almost be useless. You're going to completely waste the value of this talent there. So again, a 5 out of 10 and honestly, that's pushing it for me. Where's this purple? There we go. Um... So yeah, overall a 5 out of 10 for that, but I mean, it could even be lower. I think neither of them are really even kind of that close to Kyrian. I think Kyrian just still has more value if you want to go Kyrian. But as I said, I would recommend for Arena going Benthyr. Um, if we take a look at some of the conduits, we can look in the disc column. We've got the disc Arena column here. And as I said, the... the spreadsheet link is going to be in the description so if you do want to take any extra time looking at these for reference please uh, feel free if you have any comments on how I've rated things uh, I'd love to hear about it um, as I said this is all from my personal opinion maybe I got some stuff wrong maybe some stuff is not in line uh, so I would be happy to hear about anything that you think is not quite right so I can you know, go in and maybe tweak it a little bit Obviously, this is all depending on future buffs and nerfs, so any changes I will try to uh, reflect in the spreadsheet. So, starting off, we've got Exaltation. Rapture's duration is increased by 2 seconds, and its Powered Shield Enhancement is increased by 10%. I've actually given this a B. Potentially, it could be an A, but I don't think the Rapture duration is that valuable. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe this is an A. I think it's definitely stronger than the Pain Suppression Heal, which actually is quite low. Uh, but yeah, this is a B verging on A, I would say, uh, for, for PvP. I think some of the other covenants, uh, some of the other conduits you can get are definitely more valuable. Um, the enhancement of the shield. Generally, the shields are doing quite a lot anyway, so I would say that the extra 10% is not really needed. People often don't manage to go through the shield that fast so um, generally you can reshield before the global is up anyway if you need to uh, we've got as i said pain suppression heals your target for 10% same as the current azurite trait i don't think this is enough to um, to warrant taking it i don't think it's going to change the way that you're going to use ps um, so I've given this a B. I think it's very situational. And again, PS is a three minute cooldown. So you're only getting value out of this once every three minutes. Uh, Radiance talent. This is actually scaling up really high, 79%. And I think coupled with ultimate Radiance, this could scale Radiance really well. We'll have to see if we're actually using Radiance in Arena. And how the meta is, how fast the meta is if we need it. If we do, then I think this is going to be really good. This is potentially even S tier. Uh, I put it as A tier because we just don't know right now how the meta is going to be with all the tuning. Wait and see on that. But I think this has potential to be really strong. 100%. Uh, the last one is the damage and healing of your first bolt of penance increased by 25%. And this actually scales up to 60%. Uh, which is a lot, in my opinion. This is a lot. It's going to make the initial tick of penance do a lot of damage. Uh, a lot of healing. And just generally be quite valuable in terms of, you know, PvE gameplay. As the games go longer, it's going to buff your atonement healing a lot. It's going to buff potentially your single target healing a lot. Uh, so I think this is a valuable conduit for sure. Um, 
skipping down through some of the holy ones which aren't relevant. Uh, there are two shadow ones actually which you can use, same as the Azerite traits, uh, for example Death Throws in BFA. You can actually use the shadow conduits while being disc and they have value. 7% uh, increased damage on Mind Blast. The Devouring Plague bit is obviously irrelevant. Um, I think it's still a B. I don't think that the extra damage on Mind Blast is that good. Mind Blast base damage is quite low anyway. So not a huge fan of this one. Uh, but Mindbender slash Shadow Fiend's attack speed is increased by 20% and it deals 10% more damage. I think this is significant. I think that you're actually going to notice this when you pop uh, your Shadow Fiend to kind of relieve a little bit of AoE pressure. Uh, so I don't think this is a bad one uh, in terms of the potency. Uh, but there are some other really good potency ones. Depending on the Covenant that you go, both the Kyrian and the uh, Venthyr ones I think are really strong. Mind games lasting an additional 3 seconds uh, has really good value if they don't dispel it, for sure. Uh, and obviously an additional 20 to 35% more damage and healing. And then Ascended Blast dealing up to 25% more damage as well. Both of these are quite valuable in terms of burst potential. So I've given them an S. Uh, the other two Covenants, as I say, are generally really lackluster. I've given these both Bs just because the Covenants are so bad that it doesn't matter if you're increasing these. It's, 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 they're still going to be bad. Uh, then we have the Endurance uh, Conduits. And Powered Shield on an ally shields you for 10% of the amount for 10 seconds. I think this could be good against some AoE comps where you shield uh, the allies a fair bit, especially doing Rapture. It's going to negate a lot of damage on you as well if you've got like a lot of dots on you or something like that. Uh, other than that, I don't see this having that much value uh, when compared to the other two, for example. So Desperate Prayer heals you for an additional 5 to 20%. That's a lot in my opinion. And it's not 20% of what it heals you, it's 20% of your max health. So it almost doubles the value at max level of your Desperate Prayer. Which is really insane when you consider Desperate Prayer is only a minute and a half cooldown and off global. So I've given that an S. Defensively, that's really, really good. Uh, then we've got the Fade one. Translucent image. For the first 5 seconds of Fade, you take 5% reduced damage. This actually goes up to 15% reduced damage. And that's half what Faint does. And this is off global. So I think this is actually a really, really strong button push, especially if you know that people are going to swap to you. Taking 15% less damage essentially for free uh, is... I mean, you can do it every time somebody swaps to you, right? Fade is a 30 second cooldown. This is going to be really powerful in my opinion and has the potential to get nerfed. Uh, so I think this is actually the strongest one. I've given them both an S because they're strong in different ways for different comps. But um, yeah, both of them definitely the ones to go for when you've, when you've got an endurance slot. Then we're on to the Finesse Conduits, and I've given Dispel Magic, Purify, and Master Spell cost 20% less mana. I mean, this is huge in my opinion. Anything where you're going to be using Dispel Magic, this is insane. Anything where you're going to, you know, dispel a lot off your teammates, this is insane. And especially if you're Master Spelling, which costs a lot of mana, this is insane. So I've given that an S. And then after Psychic Scream ends, affected target's movement speed is reduced by 40 to 70%. So for a class without a slow, this is really strong as well. And potentially, uh, this is going to be dispellable. I believe it is. But if you eat a dispel charge with that, that's you know value, right? Uh, so I think this is has the potential to be really, um, really disruptive, especially to melee classes. And it's going to allow you to to kite and and to get away a lot more when fearing and and. If you fear somebody away from the fight, for example, it's going to be a pain for them to get back. If you fear a healer away, for example, he's going to get slowed. He's going to have to dispel himself, then he can't dispel his team. So this this actually is a super strong one. I'd say this is potentially stronger all round than Clear Mind. Then we've got Move with Grace, Levitate Grants, 10% move speed. Uh, and this works on allies, but keep in mind when they, play, uh, when they press an offensive button or when they get hit, then this is going to get removed. So... Loses a lot of value because of that, in my opinion. And then the last one is Power Infusion incurs a 5 second reduced cooldown when you cast on an ally. And this is up to 20, 20, this shouldn't be percent this is 20 seconds reduced cooldown when used on an ally. And I think this could be good, potentially with a mage. Uh, especially if you use the PI Legendary, where if you PI an ally, it also applies to yourself. 
uh, that synergy is going to be really strong and it's going to give you you know one minute 40 pi which is a fair bit less considering it's two minute base uh, it's going to allow for some nice offensive plays some really high bursts in goes and high octane gameplay so i think this is this is an a but potentially if you're playing with like a mage or something this could be even higher uh, so definitely keep this one in mind um and i think the conduits all have their own niches like it's easy to give them a rating you know one size fits all rating but yeah they all have their own niches and just keep in mind that depending on what you're playing or what you're playing against these have the potential to change so if we look into soulbinds uh for arena i'm just going to go through the kyrian and ventadir ones the other ones as I said, are relatively irrelevant. We don't care about those. The, the active abilities are so low that the trees are not going to really sway us either way. And I'm not going to go through each individual one, but I'll give you the final rating. So for Pelagos, we've got a 6 out of 10. Um, notable ability, obviously, is the passive Versa. It's going to be up most of the time, I would say. That's an 8 out of 10. 5% passive Versa is very nice. Uh, and then Claire, we've got Fire of Serenity renders you immune to curse, disease, poison, and bleed for eight seconds. Really nice against rogues, against ferals, uh, potentially even against like DKs, maybe Affliction Warlocks to not get that agony. Um, but that's really pushing it. Um, overall, I'm giving this a six out of ten, and the last one is getting a four out of ten. Nothing really that strong in this guy. Uh, I've put in a few notes there. Venthyr, we've got a 7 out of 10. And for Venthyr, I think it's really between uh, Nadja and Theotar. They're both quite close, I, I feel like. Uh, I've actually given Theotar an 8. Uh, but Nadja has the, obviously, the minus 25% interrupt snare and root duration. It's definitely the talent of note in this tree. Very, very strong. Um, and then the haste proc as the final one. The door talent's not that strong. Uh, this DRs your fear. And obviously you can just shield yourself if you want 40% room speed and it doesn't decay. So these, while being nice, are definitely not as strong as Theotar's door talent, which is a 9 out of 10 in my opinion. Absolutely insane. It removes roots and snares. And I think for disc, this is nuts. This is something that you don't have in your kit. A uh, freedom. So to have it on a... Uh, a teleport where you can shield right after and try and kite away or, or push onto someone is gonna be really really strong for you uh, the other one a six out of ten not as strong in my opinion uh, and then the, the final talent on theater's tree is actually for me a nine out of ten uh, activating your venthyr class ability which is mind games signals the start of tea time granting 10 percent versatility to you and four percent versa to four nearby allies this is like this is insane this is like the dream for pvp right this is perfectly going to be perfectly timed with when you're doing burst um you know when you want to you know have that that game changing ability with mind mind games so it's gonna gonna apply to it and do more damage uh as well as you know making you take less damage so huge fan of this one which is why theater is an 8 out of 10 uh, and i think he's my my tree of choice right now uh, General Draven is just not really notable. He doesn't have anything good, really. Um, maybe while well above 80%, you gain 1% primary stat, but this comes off under 50. Everything else is relatively lackluster in this tree. Uh, so, yeah, to finish up, we've got 6 out of 10 for the best Kyrian, 8 out of 10 for the best Venthyr. Venthyr ability is generally better, so Venthyr getting an 8 out of 10 for me and is my uh, covenant for disc in Arena what I'm going to be running. So this was the Disc Covenant ranking video for Arena. And if you guys are interested in me doing a similar one for Mythic Plus or Raid, then please let me know. Uh, chuck, uh, chuck your thoughts in the comments. Um, you can actually check out the rankings in the spreadsheet. If that's enough for you, then by all means go nuts. But if you want me to break it down a little bit for you uh, and kind of give my thoughts on why those rankings are the way they are, then yeah as i said i can do another video um if not 
then the next video will be on legendaries and we will do legendary info video then the legendary ranking video uh so you got that to look forward to uh as always thank you for watching